Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. Dave here from Metal Epidemic, back with another album review. For this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from Swiss metal band The Erconauts. The band's new album, I Want It To End, will be released independently on October 1st. So, uh, these guys, totally new to me, um, but they have been active since around 2014. And I Want It To End is the band's third full-length album. Surprisingly, Duncan... The band's main songwriter is a guy called Alice Campanelli, who was the bass player for Cybreed. <laughs> I know. I know. Whatever happened to Cybreed? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not aware of reading anything that says that they're not writing music. I don't know. Um, I think the last thing I heard of them was the, the one about the automaton. Is it God is an automaton or something like that? I think that was the last album I remember hearing of them, but I love that album. Um, uh, his bass playing did not sound like that on the Cybreed albums. Nope. Um, it's funky here, Dave. It's yeah, funky. It's, absolutely. Um, he also handles uh, vocal duties on the album. Uh, and then he's accompanied by a gentleman called Drop on guitars, uh, Vinch Enzo on drums, and Fred DeLemon... <laughs> Fred de Lemon Jelly on lead guitars. I love These that. These got to be made up, surely. I love a little glass of lemon jelly after my <laughs> after my spaghetti, Dave. <laughs> um, don't laugh. Yeah. It just encourages me. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, out, out of all the albums that we um, are reviewing this week, this is the one that I probably went back to the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not because like I, I didn't like it, but because. I wasn't at first. I wasn't quite sure how to classify it. Like I was like, "What? This doesn't really fit into a particular hole or shape." The, it's the an oddity, are. is how I would call it. It's an oddity yeah, of an album. Yeah, they're like one of these like kind of rare bands that that are so wide ranging in their sound that you can't really just slap a genre on it and like call it a day. Um, it's 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 got it's got a metal edge to it definitely, uh, but. It also incorporates, uh, there's punk in there, there's prog in there, there's thrash in there, a bit of alternative in there. It's it's a very eclectic sounding record. Um, and all those like genres thrown at the mix may sound like a bit of a, a risky move, but um, but it, it kind of balances itself out pretty well. Um, thinking of, like I was trying to think of bands that sound like the Erconauts, and it's not an easy task, Mm-mm. Duncan. Um I don't feel that there is a direct comparison out there at all. Um, although the, the the band I could find the closest, there was shades of maybe System of a Down. That was as close as I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that while the Erconauts don't sound identical to System of a Down, they're probably, as I said, the closest comparison I could make in terms of their kind of broad range of sounds. Um, and then, like, throwing a bit of Primus in there... Um, Maybe even a wee bit of Macedon in there. There's even a wee hint of Gojira in there as well at mm-hmm. times. Um, and then you're maybe starting to paint a picture that slightly <laughs> resembles the Erconauts. <laughs> um, I suppose one one thing they do have in common with a lot of those bands is their ability to deliver big riffs with big hooks. Mm-hmm. Um, they know how to pack a, a punch through like a, a snappy riff or a heavy groove, but equally they are very good songwriters. Um, and their kind of passion for writing big choruses is clearly just as important as the kind of groovier side. Um, I think the fact that they're able to bring together so many styles and deliver it with like an impact and be as catchy at the same time is, is pretty impressive. Um, I thought um, there's a track called "The Cult of the Burning Star." Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was a really good example of like a, um, the kind of tight link up between the guitars and the drums, which give the track a, a nice groove, but the chorus sounds like something you'd hear on like a Faith No More album. Yes. Um, uh, You know, or even like at the opposite end of the the kind of tempo scale, you've got like The Curse of Scotland, which shows off more of their kind of punkier kind of personality. Um, But they still managed to embed this kind of darkened kind of melody through it, which 
Uh, maybe isn't like as, as kind of hook laden as some of the earlier tracks in the album, but it still has something about it that kind of lures you in. Um, what are you making of the Erkanauts? It's interesting because um, I had to do a deep dive on the old uh, what the lyrics for the Curse of Scotland were because I thought they were right. on us and they'd worked out that the Curse of Scotland is that all Scottish men have 12 inch cocks. Oh, really? Difficult to pack into your underwear, Dave, but apparently <laughs> the lyrics don't reference that at all, and I've just realised I've given away our secret on air. Shit. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah, you actually, the band you mentioned, which instantly came to mind when listening to their canots, um, not as a direct comparison, but certainly the more I listened to it was Faith No More. Um oh. There's a lot of faith no more in here. Uh, I'm not just saying that because it has a slab of the bass. Um, I'm <laughs> not at all, but the the way they bring in so many different elements and, you know, there's funk and metal and God knows what else in here reminded me very much of how Faith No More just approached music with hmm. the kind of, the credo of, it's, it's the cat thing, isn't it? It's the cat in a box. If it fits, I sits. Yeah. This is literally how they write music, I think, is like, if it fits the song, it stays. Um, if that's the direction it sounds like we're going, then we'll just do it. And mm-hmm. I really found that quite refreshing. I, I found it mm-hmm. very refreshing. Coupled with the fact that this album does not sound like it was recorded near any sort of technology we have heard albums recorded on recently. There's yeah. a real kind of old kind of tangible sort of dusty mixing disc sort of like sim going on here um, mm-hmm. which I think totally suits what the band are doing it, it very much feels like this kind of it kind of feels like this could have been recorded in the early 90s mm-hmm. yeah. um, and like I say I think it aids it for, for sure I think the production is killer though like I, I think the guitars sound great uh, you're right at the hooks when they come in you don't have to listen to like, the opening track War Flamingos to kind of get an idea of you're listening to something special um, mm. because the rhythms on it are kind of disjointed and a little bit weird um, but it's, it's, it's like wall to wall hooky riffs um, yeah. even through to Five Orange Seeds which once again is, is a kind of different tact, it's a different approach to writing it but still very much the Erconaut sound um, yeah. I think Front and centre, obviously, the vocals sell this band quite well. I love his tone. Did not realise it was yeah. the same dude that was playing bass, which makes me hate him even more because he's doing two things really well. Um, but the bass playing's brilliant. And yeah, this is an album that really... It's not that it defies comparison. Like you say, you can link it to other bands, but you couldn't say to a Mastodon fan you would really like their Arcanauts. No, and you can really say as a system of a town fan, you really like the Arcanauts, but the yeah. elements are all here and they're all done very, very well. I mm. the thing about it is, even at times where I was like, oh, that's a weird choice to go down. On the second listen, when I was listening it back, I was like, no, that actually totally works. And when I found myself at points where I was like, I don't know if I like it could be over soon, like the middle track in the album, mm. uh, the first time I listened to it, the second time I listened to it through, I thought it was one of the stronger tracks on the album. So I think it's a really a mood piece as well. I think just depending on when you hit it, certain mm-hmm. tracks will stand out more than others. Uh, mm. But front to back, it's a great album. It's a fucking quick listen as well. This is under 40 minutes, gives you tons of stuff to think about tons of stuff to pick apart uh, mm. and delivered in a really cool package um, yeah, yeah I mean this is the greatest thing to come out of Switzerland since Toblerone <laughs> uh, it's Swiss isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't want to malign yeah. another country's <laughs> chocolate uh, but you know what I mean there, there is there, there's there I mean the only criticism you might want to level at their canots is that there, maybe there is a singular lack of cohesion on the album overall mm. but I actually don't see that as a, a downside, I actually see it as one yeah. of their strengths, I imagine mm. seeing these guys live would be fucking mental um, yeah. Yeah, so because you'd, everyone would just be going you didn't know what you'd be getting next if you know what I mean <laughs> yeah and the musicianship is unbelievable, oh, it's I'd, next love level. It. <laughs> I'd love to see it live, this, this band are like tighter than two coats of paint Um <laughs> But they they play with such like flair as well. Like that bass playing is so freaking good, man. What was he like, doing in Cybreed apart from slumming it? 
That's right, I'm know. calling you out, motherfucker. I don't, I don't Slumming know. it on Cybreed. Oh, man. Track like War Flamingos and uh, Losing is the First Step. It just made me want to quit my job and learn slap bass. <laughs> like, I mean, I've, I mean, I've already handed in my notice at work, so. All I'm saying is if Mark King should hang up his bass <laughs> and level 42 are looking for a new bass player, maybe not vocalist, although I would love to hear him sing There's Something About You. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, get this did in. He's got the chops. Yeah. He's got the fucking yeah, chops, man. He's and not vocal- doing it. You mentioned Primus. Primus having, like, Les Claypool is a phenomenal bass player, but it's used yeah. as a quirk in their songwriting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not used quirky here at all. It's used straight down the middle to benefit the song in such a way like a band like Mudvayne would use their mm-hmm. kind of bass technique to elevate the music here. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same in the Arconauts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and bass playing's not his only talent. He's actually a pretty varied vocalist as I well. I liked his vocals, really liked his. Um, I did not know he was the vocalist as well, that's why I was a bit shocked. No. <laughs> um, I dug his, I really dug his kind of screamy tone. It, it reminded me, of, funny you mentioned Mudvayne, it reminded me a little bit of Chad from Mudvayne at mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got that kind of like gravel to his voice, but there's also a, like a slight melody through it at the same time. Um, and his, his kind of all out melody is great too and quite um, quite unpredictable. Um, I like that he played with the kind of range of his voice as well. Like sometimes he'd go for something in the kind of lower register rather than the note you were expecting. Yeah. Um, my only kind of small gripe um, on the vocals were there were points on the album where I was struggling to make out what he was singing. Um, and mo- most of the times it was fine, I could follow it, but I thought the vocals could have been clearer at certain points. And mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it was a, a production thing or... Um, a translation thing I'm not entirely sure so but say Cybreed um, were they Belgian or were they Swiss oh I think they might have been Swiss as well actually aye I need to double check I'm not 100% sure but because he wasn't Swiss the vocalist in Cybreed was he no I don't think so no I don't, I don't think so either so a hell of a um, vocalist I, I don't disagree yeah. with it. it it wasn't the thing that I, I maybe wasn't paying that much attention to it. I, I don't mm. necessarily disagree with that at all yeah, well, I noticed that on that, funnily enough, that kind of the Curse of Scotland, that last track, because um, I was trying to figure out what the song was actually about. But I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't make out the lyrics. I wasn't sure what he was singing about. It's not about um, our massive penises, Dave. Unfortunately, not. No. Um, <laughs> the two, uh, the kind of two like ballady type tracks, um, they were okay. Um, I, I don't have anything against ballads if they're you know if they're done right, but I understand. They give an album a bit of contrast, but I don't know. For me, both tracks felt maybe a little, a little similar in kind of pattern and tone, um, to the point that, like on the first listen, I thought it was the same song that I was listening to again. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, in more listens, you can hear that they're different. Um, but I think, for me, maybe they should have tried to make them a little bit more distinctive from each other. Um, or maybe that's what they're going for. Who knows? <laughs> um, that, that aside, um, still a very good album, um, and those tracks wouldn't stop me from going back and giving this album more spins in the future. I uh, still thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Rating-wise, for this one, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, for, for even even with the small kind of gripes I had, um, this is still quite an original sounding album. I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5. I'm 100% with you. Uh, we need Ooh. to stop agreeing on so many things, Dave. This is, a, this is once again, the epitome, in my opinion, of a four-star album. It's varied. It, once again, it's not... It's not the greatest thing that I've ever heard, but The Echonauts is an album that I will 100% be going back to this year. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've definitely got a bit of personality. Um, If you want to check this one out, it drops on October 1st. Um, The album is called I Want It To End. And if you want to check the band out online, you can check them out at facebook.com forward slash The Echonauts. I'll put a little link in the description below. Uh, thanks once again for checking out our review, guys. Much appreciated. We'll be back with a, a new review very soon. But until then, take care, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>